see her controlling everything, you see his nervousness, and you see her great competence as a call girl. You know, you see her being the call girl, which is different than her acting in other pieces of the film. We could have a nice half and half party for 50. Mm -hmm. In that particular sequence at the end when she's saying, oh, angel, angel, and you feel that she's in, in the scene, she glances at her watch, you know, which lets us know oh, that she is timing herself. She's just doing her job, but doing her job very well, oh. you know, very sexy oh. in a very careful way. Then after that, there's a sequence of her going home and being alone at home, which is amazing in its detail, which is that you see her walking down the street with a bouquet of yellow flowers. Then you see her going up her stairs, and um, kids are playing on the street, but the last image you see says funeral home at the top of the frame, which gives it the sort of macabre, sinister feeling. Then she's in the hallway suddenly with the music playing. You understand for the first time that she feels that she's being stalked. Then there are several shots of her just at home alone. She immediately turns on the shower, you know, which is very key, you know, cleansing, washing, purification. Then in her robe, she sits at a desk, smoking marijuana, drinking a glass of wine, coming down off her day, but also singing a hymn. And from the beginning, the fight we were winning. And the hymn seems quite spontaneous, but suddenly gives us a sense of her background, maybe Midwestern, very religious, um, major contradiction. And then after that, you see her in bed reading Linda Goodman's Sun Signs. Um, finally, when the radio says it's, it's midnight, she turns the lamp off, settles herself, and the phone rings. And then suddenly, everything changes. She picks up the phone, it's no one, she hangs it up, but you know it's the caller who's been tormenting her. And when the phone starts to ring again and she just lets it ring and ring, it, the camera just tracks back very, very slowly and you see her in her fear and her isolation. One of the things that I love about um, the details in this sequence is that they are totally contradictory because the amazing thing in it is that when she's in her room there are all these juxtapositions of character with no dialogue you know um yes she sings a hymn so you know she's religious she's smoking marijuana so she, you know she's countercultural. um then later she's reading linda goodman's sun signs so you know she's superstitious here's a woman who's trying to find meaning in her life and yet she's completely and totally alone. And that loneliness is something that comes through. There were details in Clute that I just did not find in any other movie about um, prostitution. For example, when a woman does a trick, right, she's giving something away. She buys yellow flowers to bring home. That's something for herself. You know, it's very important that she spends some of that money on something for herself. So within this sequence of maybe four or five shots, you have a, a real sense of her life. You know, what, what the contradictions are, what kind of person she is, um, what her personal needs are, in a way that I think is unparalleled um, in filmmaking. Hello.